All right, sitting here with Isaac Chilembo who's fighting Dmitry Chudinov on February the 20th, coming up really, really soon. Isaac, uh, firstly, I mean, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good, thanks. You're doing good. And yeah. um, fight preparations, how, how did they go? Yeah, you know, we had such a short um, notice, I mean, short time of preparation, but uh, I think we put on enough work. We did uh, all we can to pick up fitness. Uh, to a hundred uh, percent level and I think I'm ready for the fight well again another big fight so you're going to Russia and you know it's one of those fights that you win and you could be at that world title level again once you know once again um, how have you approached this fight mentally uh, you know mentally I'm ready for this fight I mean remember it was meant to happen last year before the COVID lockdown and uh, we actually reached out on, on our way to the airport when they told us to turn back and uh, since then I've been waiting for it, waiting for when it will happen again. And now finally we're here, even though they caught us four weeks into the, uh, be, um, four weeks to the fight. Uh, so that gave us only four weeks of preparation. But you know what, um, since the gyms were open, I've been in the gym, uh, keeping myself busy. So even though I knew it was only four weeks of preparation and uh, uh, we sat down, me and Jody sat down, we spoke about it and I'm ready for the fight and I'm really looking forward to it. Even at this level where you've competed, you know, you fought the best of the best and are you still learning at this stage of your career? Oh yes, yeah, you have to keep learning each and every day. That's how you grow. I mean, if I stop learning now, then I could never be anything else than what uh, everybody knows, uh, knows me as I am. So yeah, I'm learning, even though it's hard now, at uh, later just, I mean, um, later stage of my life it's very hard to pick up new things so easily but I'm still trying to give myself time to learn, learn new things, add on new things to my boxing um, experience. Well you've been with your, your trainer Jody Solomon for a very long time and you know someone that came into your life now is also Roy Jones. Um, the combination of the two working together, um, how are you feeling that Joel? Yeah it's a great combination. I mean uh, I could never be uh, more happy than what I have right now. I mean, I've been working with Jude for almost 12 years now. And uh, yes, in between we've added on some other trainers that we worked with. But uh, now for the last couple of four or five years, we're with Roy as a part of a team. So yeah, it's been great. I've got the greatest team I ever had. I mean, anyone could wish to have. And, and, and with regards to him, will he be able to make it to Russia? Oh yes, he is definitely coming. We'll meet, we'll meet there. We're leaving the Sunday. We're leaving tomorrow and he's leaving on Sunday and we'll meet there in Russia. Do you, do you uh, look at his career as inspiration as well? I mean, he was a great boxer in his time. Growing up, oh, I looked up to this Roy Jones Jr. I mean, there was other fighter, fighters that I looked up to, uh, the likes of Muhammad Ali, Shugaru Reynad, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, but Roy has always been my best. I like his, uh, his boxing style, his movements, his speed. He's thinking when he's in the ring, and all I wanted to be is to be like Roy Jones Jr. Now that I'm working with him, it's just something else that I cannot even express. But yeah, having him there and learning it, learning what I used to learn by myself, looking at a TV or looking on a uh, on a phone and try to copy what he has. Now I'm learning, I'm learning it first hand. Is something that no one can buy. And let's look towards the fight now, Chudinov. I mean, what do you make of him as, as an opponent? No, uh, Chudinov is a good fighter, a strong young fighter, a uh, comfort fighter. But I think when I look at him and look at myself, we are slightly at a different level. Uh, I know he's got a good record. My record now is in a bad position, but we are at a different level. When, when I get in there, uh, I look at my, my, myself, I look at my style and look at his style. I don't think there's any much. You mentioned your record, but I mean, there have been a few debatable decisions in your career. And yeah, there's, you know. uh, yeah, there's been a couple of them that TV do to believe I didn't lose those fights. And there's some that I know, yes, I gave away the fight. So, yeah, but you know what? This is boxing. It is what it is. Would you, li would you like to share with us, you know, the ones that you felt that you won? Yeah, uh, like uh, the recent fight I fought Maxim Vlasov in... Uh, in uh, Russia, the second fight I had with him, I believe I won the fight. Um, uh, when I, I fought, uh, uh, what's his name? 
um, the cover of fat in Russia uh, could have gone either either way, which I'm not mad about. They gave it to him. Yes, he was a champion. So yeah, uh, so th yeah, there's been a couple of fights that I, I have to sit down to go into it to think of the fights that I believe I really won and they were given to my opponent to them. Maybe because I fought them in their home ground. Well, the one I was thinking of specifically was Tony Bellew, you know, the one yes, that yeah, happened in England. Yeah, yeah, Tony Bellew as well. Yes, the second fight he, wo he won, but the first fight, they, get, they, 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 they made it a draw, which was unfair. I totally won that fight. Like, even today, if I sit down and look, look at it round after round, I won the fight, but they made it a draw. So, I don't know, at the end of the day, it's just part of life, I guess. When you look at like careers and so forth, and you see like after that result and so forth, and, and a couple of the other boxes that, you know, got a decision based off of a close fight, and like Bailey, for example, he went on to do great things afterwards. I mean, do you look at that and, and think about you know like how much success it could have won if it just went the other way for you? No, I know. I believe we all got different uh, paths in 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 life. Uh, we all got journeys that we go through. I mean, we got you've got a choice to turn another way or continue going straight or turn back we all go so uh, even if uh, if uh, the, the fight was given to me the first fight I don't know what could have happened I mean, what could have happened to Tony Bellu and what my career could have taken me to we all got different path I think right now I am where I was meant to be uh, in order to learn what I have to learn in this life to progress so yeah I did whatever uh, uh, he did after after that. I mean, that fight, winning that fight, took him that that far, and I went back down. But no, we're on a different road. Uh, he came. He's retired now, and I'm going the other way. And we'll see where life will take me. So that leads me to my next question, because you know you you're the guy that's always up there. Do you think Chudinov's looking at you, thinking I want Isaac Chalemba's name on my record? Yeah, most definitely. He's trying to get himself up in the ranking and uh, I don't know what possessed them to uh, think of me or fighting someone a lot heavier. I know they think that um, uh, if uh, when I dropped to super middleweight, which which is the division I last fought about 10, 11 years ago, they think, they believe that I'll be weak and I won't have much strength in that way. But they don't know, they don't know me. I've been in this game for a little while now. I know how uh, my body reacts um, when losing weight and what things I have to do to lose weight in a healthier way than wearing plastic and running each and every day. So I'll be strong as I'm at light heavyweight. So that's the loss to them. So if they're approaching the fights in that way where they, you know, they're looking at putting your name on their record and, you know, also building towards, I mean, how are you looking at it? Yeah, I'm also looking at it that way. I mean, he's a high ranked fighter in a uh, swimming weight. I think now he's ranked number five or six in the world, and uh, in all top sanctioned bodies, I think he's ranked in, in he's in the top fifteen of each top to ranked. I mean, top uh, sanctioned bodies. So defeating him, even though he's a super middleweight, will give me a credit. Uh, credit. Now it depends whether I decide to stay at light. I'm mean, super middleweight, which I don't think it will happen, or go back to light heavyweight. And we'll see where this uh, winning this fight way will take me to, whether it will put me back in it and top ten because you know, now I'm currently I think uh, ranked 16 or 17 in the world. So after defeating the guy who's ranked in top top five, I, I, that that means my my ranking will take me back down there to top five or something like that. So we'll see what happens with this fight. It, it's a great fight for me to have on my record. And I know it's crazy times, but get the win here. I mean, you mentioned, you, you know, it'll take you places. But, I mean, are there names out there, guys, that you're looking at that you actually want to get in the ring with again? Yeah, um, I, I would love to um, to fight uh, Godzeg again. I have a rematch with him, a lot heavyweight. And um, I used to think of uh, Kovarev, but I think Kovarev is done now. And, uh, yes, there's BDPF in light heavyweight. And if I decide to stay in the super middleweight, there's really two guys. I mean, I haven't looked at Super Middleweight in a very long time. I didn't know much about the guys up until now that I'm fighting Super Middleweight and I looked up the rankings. So there's two guys that I could think of that I would like to get a chance if I decide to stay at Super Middleweight. There's uh, Plant, what's it? Caleb Trout, Plant. Yeah, yeah. Caleb Plant. Mm -hmm. That guy I think is good, so I would love to, get, to give myself a chance to fight a guy like that. Or if I could get a chance to fight Canelo himself. 
it would be sure. great. Yeah, that's uh, that's I think I think everyone wants the Canelo Alvarez yeah, fight, yeah. but you got to position yourself and, and um, fighting in Russia again. I mean, this is a place that you're frequenting now. Um, you know, is it important for you now to get the that big win there? Yes, it is very important, especially right now in, uh, at this point of my career. It's very important that I will get that win. And you know, message for 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 Chudinov, what what would be it uh, if you got before you got step in the ring? Obviously, oh, all I can say to Chudinov is I'm, I, I am coming there to rush out of fight. I'm coming there for a win. I'm not coming there just to play around. And um, whatever they're banking on, of me losing so much weight, being weak, it's not going to work. It's not what it is. So they must just forget about that and just be prepared for the actual fight. All right. And uh, do you have a message lastly for people out there? Oh, yeah. Um, I just thank ev- all my fans, everybody around the world who supports me and most great in my team. Jody Solomon, she's been there for a very long time. I lost her because of her. I was a joke about her. Because <laughs> we've been working together for a very long time. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. and my teammates, uh, my sparring partners, they're all behind me. And now I've got new sponsors. These guys also uh, they behind me um, towards this fight. And all the fans all over the world, here in South Africa, in Malawi, and everywhere. And I am going to Russia and I come back with a win. Yeah.